Hello again. Uh, so our second speaker for today is Jesus Alcazar Treviño. Uh, hello, Jesus. Uh, Jesus is a PhD student at the University of La Laguna in the Canary Island. Uh, he's affiliated uh, with the research group on biodiversity, marine ecology and conservation, BioEcomac. And he is going to present us the results of a study that uh, he has just published in the journal uh, Proceeding of the Royal Society. The, the title is uh, Deep Diving Bigged Whales Dive Together but Forage Apart. So, Jesus, whenever you want, you have uh, 20 minutes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I hope you can see my screen and hear me. <laughs> well, first of all, I would like to, to thank the ECS for organizing this webinar and having me here. And of course, I would like to thank my supervisors and, uh, and the fantastic team of collaborators we have for this project. We'll start talking uh, about group living in social animals. This can have benefits and costs. So for the benefits, for example, a, a lower predation risk and an increase in foraging efficiency. But within costs, there could be competition for resources between the animals of the same group. And also sensory interference for the signals that these animals use to find food and to coordinate group movements. We are talking about sensory interference. In the case of acoustic signals, it will depend on the duration and directionality. So for signals with long duration and low directionality, as for example here, whistle dolphin, uh, these are more susceptible to, to acoustic interference. And on the other hand, acoustic signals with less duration and higher directionality, like the powerful echolocation clicks of some cetaceans. You see here a, a click from a big whale. This would be less susceptible to this um, acoustic interference. But in the case that we are in a context of uh, a group, foraging in a group with more animals and high uh, click rates, clicks from other animals could uh, could interfere with the detection of the weak echoes returning for prey. So in the costs of group living in social animals, we would have this uh, acoustic uh, jamming and different uh, echolocators have uh, developed uh, strategies to fight this jamming. So for some bats and bottlenose dolphins, it has been seen that they change in frequency, amplitude and or timing of their acoustic signals and also increase their silent periods while foraging in groups. But also benefits from these echolocating in groups could be cooperative foraging, for example, when um, orcas are herding uh, fish prey, and also eavesdropping, which is the case for some bats that in laboratory experiments, they have been seen to be attracted by uh, certain sounds from conspecifics that these are rapid click sequences, so called buses, that indicate uh, prey capture attempts. So what about uh, social animals that need to forage at depth, like the deep diving pit whales? We are talking about blendings and cubiers big whales. These animals, here you see a dive profile of a blending. They dive uh, at mesopelagic depths for some 60 minutes each di foraging dive. You see the arrows indicate the vocal period. So they use echolocation clicks to locate food and the buses to try to capture this prey. But at the same time, for shallower waters, they remain silent. And also they have these uh, highly coordinated dives when living in groups and uh, with the ascent at certain angles. And this is supposed to be a predator abatement strategy. So uh, they have to balance uh, between the benefits and costs of this group living. 
So we are going to see how do they manage these trade-offs of group foraging. We'll uh, analyze the tag deployments to study their acoustic activity and movements. And our null hypothesis uh, will be big whale foraging performance is unaffected by group size. We also made some predictions. So if there is intra-group foraging competition, individual bus rates will tend to decrease in larger groups. If there is jamming because of other group members' signals, individual click rate would change with increasing group size. <clears throat> Sorry. And if there are eavesdropping on conspecific signals, the individual click rates would reduce with increasing group size while the bus rates would increase. So for the methods, we use the biologging techniques, uh, in this case, the detached devices. These are attached, as you see in the picture, on the dorsal, uh, the dorsum of the whales using suction cups. These are uh, on the animal for almost uh, up to three days, they detach. And then uh, thanks to the radio antenna, we can uh, recover it and extract, uh, extract all the data. The data includes uh, acoustic samples taken by one or two hydrophones. Uh, it could also have a GPS and also a depth sensor, temperature sensor, and uh, orientation sensor. These are uh, accelerometers and magnetometers. And here you can see the, the table of deployments. Each row is a, is a deployment. You see we have in total 16 for Blainville's big whales of El Hierro Island in the Canaries and 10 deployments on Cuviers in the Ligurian Sea in Italy. You also can see uh, different group sizes for each deployment. And we were able to analyze a number of foraging dives per deployment accounting for a total of 50 in the Blainville's case and 39 for the Cuviers. So once we have the data, we use the, the DTAC toolbox from MATLAB to first locate the vocal activity, so identifying the, the foraging dives. And then we have to distinguish between the focal, which are the tough animal sounds, and the sounds made by the other uh, members of the group. This was achieved in the stereo tags, thanks to the different angle of arrivals from the different sounds. As you see here, angle of arrival and time and different uh, click trains. And in the case of uh, tags uh, with uh, only one hydrophone, we use the special characteristics uh, to distinguish between the focal sounds and the non-focal sounds. So we divided uh, the vocal phase of the target animal into minutes. And for each minute, we counted the maximum number of concurrently detected click trains. And then we also identified the buses. Uh, as I said, uh, they are associated with prey capture attempts. With all this data, then we performed several uh, statistical analysis in R and R Studio. First, we looked at the effects of group size on vocal rates. So we used the generalized estimation equations uh, using the foraging dive as the sampling unit clustered by the tag deployment. And as response variable in two separate models, we looked at click rates and bus rates per foraging dive. And the predictor variable was always the group size. Then to look if there is a anti-jamming response in these whales, for example, an increased silent periods or in their acoustic output, we have to use uh, a, sub a sub sample, a subset of, of, of the foraging dives uh, because we needed uh, to be uh, um, the stereotypes, sorry and also with the lowest ambient noise, so we were able to detect the conspecific sounds. So our sample size uh, for this analysis uh, was 29 foraging dives from nine tags on blame bills. And we performed a Pearson correlation test to see if group size was related with the mean click rate from untagged animals. 
and also again generalized estimation equations to see if the minute average animal counts uh, were related in a model with poses in clicking and in other model with the apparent source level of the click. Then one time per, per species, the team where it was able to, to tag two whales in the same group at the same time. So this, this data set obviously is a, a limited sample size, but really high resolution. So we use the coincident uh, vocal minutes of the paired whales. This, uh, so the, the sample size is 17 minutes and 31 for blame bills and cubiers. And we perform a Pearson correlation test to see if the interclick interval of the two whales uh, were related. Also, we use circular statistics to explore the general heading of the two paired whales. And for a per minute analysis of this heading, we used a Pearson correlation test again to see if these were related. So for the results, the effects of group size on vocal rates, we found no evidence that uh, the acoustic activity of the tag whale was influenced by group size. And also the rate of clicks from the untagged whales recorded at the tag uh, showed no relationship with group size. Here you can see uh, depth profiles uh, for the different group size classes of three, four, five, and six of uh, blame wheels, and uh, colored by the number of animals vocalizing in each minute. And you can see that the minimum number of vocalized animal was always one at least. And, uh, and well, as I said, uh, they were unrelated. For the paired whales, uh, we found again that the animals click at independent rates. Here again is the dive profile for the pairs of whales, the blame bills and the cubiers, and this time is colored by the click rate, clicks per second. And although the average headings of the pair of whales was really, really similar on a per minute basis, it wasn't related. And the animals maintained acoustic contact through all the dive. So for the paired whales, uh, during all their, uh, their vocal time, they could hear each other. And for the stereotypes, for the great, the big uh, sample size, the animals were able, or the tag was able to detect at least another animal vocalizing, at least uh, a median of 91% of the time. And we, find, we found no possible anti-jamming response. So the number of nearby conspecifics detected by each tag did not influence nor the apparent source level of the clicks nor the silent periods. So to sum up uh, what we are looking at here at the discussion, which is the trade-offs of group leaping in deep diving waves. These animals could stay close during dives so they could maintain social contact, but then, competition and interference while hunting may arise. They could also separate during the dive, so there is no competition and they could hunt efficiently, but then they would lose the benefits of social deep. We have to also remember for deep diving big whales that they present strong responses to orca sounds and naval sonar, and they have this predator abatement strategy of highly coordinated dives. So then, collocating big whales foraging in highly coordinated groups may incur in costs of aggregation, or they may benefit from the proximity of group members. We found no evidence that individual prey encounter rates were affected by group size. Other species, gregarious animals, uh, present different strategies to avoid this intra-group competition for food. For example, some sheep form, they form uh, subgroups to exploit sub patches of grass. And pilot whales, uh, while part of the group stays at the surface, normally as uh, alloparental care, they take turns to dive asynchronously while they maintain acoustic contact. 
but which is the big whale strategy to reduce this intra-group competition for prey? Here we have a, a plot for the blame deals pair of whales. Uh, these are the dive profiles in three dimensions, the depth, northing and easting, and it is colored by the separation distance between the whales. This was calculated thanks to the detection of the clicks produced by one of the whales on the other tag and vice versa. So we have the, the two blame deals that are close and tightly coordinated at the surface. They dive spread to hunt at depth. They reunite first and then they ascend coordinated and silently. And this might have co-evolved with small group sizes. So the animals are able to swim close enough to coordinate, but at the same time, sufficiently apart to find unexploited prey patches. Then we have this uh, general heading coordination. We have seen that uh, on a per minute basis, the headings were unrelated, but in general, during all the dive, they follow the same direction. So it is easier then to reunite before surface. And as you see, they are foraging at mesopelagic depths. So it's almost a lightless environment. So this coordination must be aided by clicks, which then have secondary communicative function for these animals. And they are acting as acoustic beacons of the position of every member of the group while they are foraging. So acoustic interference may arise from this nearly continuous detection of conspecific clicks, but we found no evidence of jamming response uh, for these animals. For other animals, for example, some bats that produce uh, echolocation calls to, to detect prey, when they are in groups, they increase their silent periods to, to compensate for the jamming. And other uh, tooth whales, for example, orcas and bottlenose dolphins, they have been seen that the larger the group, the less per capita clicks they produce. And this was hypothesized to be that they were uh, taking advantage of uh, echolocation uh, echoes from other conspecifics. So why there is this difference between the big whales and these other tooth whales? First, uh, it could be because of the different strategies of hunting and different habitats, the shallow one and the deep waters. The shallow ones also could be reducing their acoustic output because of the clutter that may arise from all the collocation near the reflective surface of the ocean. But at the same time, it is important that we bear in mind the different methodologies. So we are using a recorder that it's physically attached to the animal. So we are really confident on our detections of sounds made by that animal, but not on the other ones. As we have said, the collocation clicks are highly directional. So as the animals uh, turn looking for prey, we could be missing clicks. For example, a drifting hydrophone could detect uh, some animals, but not if they are uh, separated. And it would be really different if we have this extensive array of hydrophones. So this is a remark to always uh, bear in mind the different methodologies could render different results. So in conclusion, for our blame bees and cubias big waves foraging groups, individual vocal rates were unaffected by group size. So it is unlikely that there is sensory interference or competition within the group while they hunt. And also it is unlikely that they share information of echo arrival from conspecific things. They maintain acoustic contact during foraging time. This aids coordination and timing and mean direction of the dives. And it allows them to separate to forage independently. So they are not cooperative hunting predators. And their collective behavioral tactics reduce intra-group competition. So the individuals maintain their foraging efficiency 
And at the same time, they are still gaining the social and predation, predation sorry, risk abatement benefits of group living. But they have to live in small groups. So they are, these are related to the foraging footprint of the group and set an upper limit to the number of whales that can be foraging simultaneously and efficiently. So they need a reliable foraging niche for this. And thank you very much again for the ECS, my collaborators, and all of you for listening on a Friday afternoon. And I'd be happy to answer any question. Thank you, Jesus, for this very interesting uh, presentation. I see a couple of questions for you. The first one from Kevin Robinson is, uh, what importance do you think this, would, this work uh, has for the conservation of these animals? Okay, well, this is a super Quite interesting a question. question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I think the, at the, the first uh, one uh, would be like uh, knowing the click rates uh, for different uh, species of big whales help us sometimes to differentiate uh, them for uh, acoustic monitoring. So uh, this was uh, really important to see if the bigger the group, the, the click rate for each animal change, because uh, then we have to, to bear in mind that if we were uh, making density estimation of animals based on acoustic detections. But for what we have saw, seen, sorry, um, they don't change their acoustic output uh, regarding to group size. So at for now, there is no problem to, to make acoustic estimates uh, with uh, this. Okay, second question. Uh, did you, uh, from Elias Foscolos, did you observe any change in apparent source level of the tagged whale when other whales were echolocating close by? Uh, well, the problem with the close by is that uh, to have uh, the really, really um, assertive, I don't know how to say, data we have. The good data for the close by is only for the paired whales. So we have a really small sample size. We performed the test and it was uh, there was no relation. But uh, sometimes with this really small sample size, we, we are not so confident to, to report the, the results, but there was no, no apparent relation. Okay, thank you. Then we have from Annabel Koch, uh, great talk. Did you see any change in click rate just before the animals reunited? No, no. We we looked at it uh, and and there was no no relation because sometimes it seemed that uh, there were some rasps uh, rasp sounds before reuniting, but this was not uh, consistent for all the dives nor for all the animals. So. So far, no. Okay. Okay. Next, uh, um, Nicolin, research coordination in the Canary Islands. Uh, do we know how many D tags uh, were used and when? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Of course, we used uh, sixteen. Uh, there were sixteen deployments on on plane bills. These were from two thousand and three to two thousand and eighteen, and for the coup years, uh, there was. Uh, 10 deployments between 2003 and 2006. Okay, thank you. Then last question for the moment is from Momoka Suzuki. Are there any change of method of, or amplitude of communication where wicked whales are chased by their predators, orca or other animals? Sorry again? Uh, if there are change of method or amplitude of communication where wicked whales are chased by their predators. Oh, while chased uh, by the it's predators. Chased, yeah. oh, sorry, we, we don't have data on, mm -hmm. on big whales being chased, no. Okay, uh, congratulations. Then we have a lot of message from uh, uh, of congratulations and compliments. Another mm -hmm. question from Cristiana. Uh, very interesting results. Uh, what could be ex uh, the explanation for them to dive and surface together? Could it also be related to the fact that as free divers, 
do, they basically check on each other for security reasons, also related to managing possible decompression issues. So if they yeah. coordinate for any issue. Yeah, the, the coordination was, um, was hypothesized in a previous paper by my, my supervisor. It was hypothesized to be a, a predator abatement strategy. So they can maintain this, uh, this tight coordination and, and therefore they are in social groups and, and they can uh, avoid or, or less the, the possibility of uh, orca chasing them. Okay, thank you. Ah, last minute question from Alberto. Is there anything uh, in particular that you would like to investigate next? This is another general question. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, now we are looking, um, we have like two projects. We are looking at the prey at mesopelagic. We are looking at mesopelagic fish and, and squid now. And, and also we are, um, we are looking at uh, more, more species uh, like to a comparison between different uh, deep diving species and their ecological niche. Okay, interesting. Thank you. And then from Fabian Ritter, do you have data on the diving behavior of young sterns and calves? Uh, do they stay at the surface like in other species? Sorry? Uh, if you have data on the diving mm -hmm. behavior of young uh, individuals and calves. Oh. Yeah, no, no, sorry, we don't have deployments on, on young animals. Okay. Okay, so I think there is no more question. I wait for a few seconds to see if they appear. The, you received a lot of compliments on the chat. <laughs> uh, so congratulations again and um, good luck with your future research. Thank you. Now, uh, I think we can stop for another 12 minutes and we will resume at uh, 4.20 with the last presentation of the day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Bye. Bye.